It has been so long, you guys, but we are back. Oh. Hey guys, Kira here from 50 Shades of Mom, tips for all shades of mom life. And in today's video, I am sharing something a little unorthodox to the style of videos that you normally see on my channel. So I've shared videos like this before, but it has been quite some time and I have a bunch of new subscribers since the last time that I have shared one. So if you guys have been with me for a little while and you're familiar with this style of video, I apologize. This section may just be a little monotonous. I feel like I have to catch up a few people who have not been around for the entire time. So before I get into the exact portion of that, if you guys are new and you think that the Fifty Shades of Mom, the title of my channel, has any relation to the Fifty Shades of Grey books, trilogies, movies, they really have zero correlation. So my channel did start during the time when Fifty Shades was a big to-do. The books were out, they were all of the scene, and all the movies were starting to come out as well. And I am a fan of the books. I have read all of them. I do enjoy them. And to be honest, I consider them an inspiration for my reading. Uh, I actually started to read them as a recommendation from someone, and it was a book on tape that I listened to the very first story as I was traveling home to New York and I really just got into the story. It was a page turner for me. I read the second and the third one and it just kick-started my love for reading and since then I've read 200 plus books. I'm in the process of finishing up a book right now and I literally read every single day and that has all been to starting out with that trilogy and just getting inspired to read again. But that really wasn't the reason for why I chose Fifty Shades of Mom. When I was toying back and forth with reasons to choose my channel name, it just, that meme always kind of pops up in my head where it shows like how much a mom's salary would be worth because, you know, we're chefs, we're taxi cab drivers, we're nurses, we're therapists. There's so many different aspects of being a mom all different shades of mom life and so I figured that was a great play off of all the hype that was going around the regular 50 shades into how I felt about being a mom just me being able to handle all the facets of mom life and sharing that with you guys from cleaning to grocery hauls to vlogging and that kind of thing so that's kind of what spawned that 50 shades of mom now let's fast forward so now they're here there are the movies being released and I threw a party where a bunch of my friends who also read the books and were interested in seeing the movies were coming to my house so that we could all go see one of the movies together and I threw a party and so I was on Amazon looking for things to use for favors or things to use as like prizes and stuff for games and something that was suggested to me was this cookbook and this cookbook is called 50 shades of chicken and so it took me like a moment at first I was like what the heck is this thing and so I looked into it it was fairly inexpensive it was under ten dollars for a cookbook I thought that was a great deal and so I looked into it and it really just gave me such a giggle so basically the entire cookbook is a parody. There's three sections of the cookbook, each section resembling one of the Fifty Shades books, but the whole thing is recipes using a play off of the Fifty Shades. So the chef being Mr. Blades is your Christian Grey, and then your chicken right here is Miss Hen, which is your Anastasia Steele. And so I really thought this was kind of like something wonderful to share being that it was a play off my name and I love to do all sorts of cooking videos and things like that in my kitchen and so I ordered the book and then I started to read it and in front of every recipe is an excerpt your next chapter that it would be in the book is your next chapter here and it's your excerpt that you read and then that leads into the recipe this book is so cleverly written but you really need to keep an open mind it's something that's supposed to be very light-hearted and fun like i said something all am i boring you ruby apparently she's over it um but 
This has to be something that, like I said, you keep an open mind. This is not like a regular recipe. It's something just to give you a giggle, just something different to share. But I was still nervous, very nervous to share this because it was unlike anything I was sharing on my channel. So in a vlog, I asked you guys. And she's back. She's all over the place, this one, right now. So in a vlog, I asked you guys, would you guys be interested in seeing this? And everyone said, yes, go ahead, share. It's all in good fun. And then I did a pilot episode where I kind of read the beginning and gave you guys a little bit of an overlay of what it would be. And everyone was still all about it. And so I started sharing it. As I started getting ready to get into it, though, again, I was super nervous. And so I went to my husband before I did the very first one. And I thought to myself, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I'm nervous. I don't want to upset anybody that feels like we're a wholesome family channel. Like, and then we're coming in with this, like, risque after dark recipe. And so he said, how can I help you? Like, how can I help you feel more comfortable? And so after him and I were talking about it, I thought, all right, well, the excerpt in front of the recipe is written in Miss Hen's perspective, but the recipe itself is from his perspective. And so I tried to read it myself and it just didn't sound right. So Daryl offered to do the voiceovers for it and since then became the Fifty Shades of Chicken series, something that we do together. And so I usually sit down and I read the excerpt before the recipe and then I go ahead and film myself cooking the recipe and then I take the actual recipe, I sit down and write a script from that and then my husband does the voiceover for it and we've had so much fun sharing these again they're not for everybody i've definitely had a fair share of people say that they're not really interested in this style of recipe but i just feel like it's something fun and the best part about it is you guys that i've had some of the best chicken recipes i've ever had out of this if you guys have heard me recently say in a grocery haul that i've been looking for duck sauce there's like a chicken recipe in here where you use apricot glaze which is very similar to duck sauce anyways and it was amazing like nobody got a piece over two days i ate the whole thing because it was so good and the chicken chili recipe that's in here i have shared that so many times I, i've already done the video for that and i've cooked it over and over and over again because it's so so good even my family asks for that chili recipe over my own. I've shared my own on this channel as well, and my family asks for this one because the recipes are great. So again, you just need to keep an open mind going into this, but I think I've put in enough time just kind of giving those who didn't know a little bit of a backstory of why that we share or what exactly that this book is. So it has been a really long time. I'm going to link the playlist up above and in the description box in case you guys want to watch the other ones and get caught up. Or if you've already watched them, maybe you want to re-familiarize yourself with the story and where that we were at. So the very last recipe that we did on the channel is we tied up the chicken for the very first time, which I've actually been able to use that recently, cooking that chicken in my rotisserie. And the name of the recipe was learning to trust you because he ties her up in trusses and it was a roasted chicken with tangerine and sage it really was a super delicious recipe and then like see they put cute little things right here to show you like a sexy guy tying up the chicken so again it's all supposed to be in fun now the next recipe is called holy mole chicken and in this recipe you're actually making a traditional mole sauce so i did film this recipe but that's not the one you guys are going to see here i'm going to read you guys the excerpt just so that you're caught up in the story but as i'm talking right now i'm just going to scroll a little bit of the footage that i already filmed but if you guys know anything about a mole it's a very traditional mexican sauce that goes on top of various different from foods whether it's chicken or pork but it is something that like in order to nail it you have to like have been cooking this from your grandma your whole life it is very hard to nail a really good mole sauce it's also a acquired taste because it has things like chipotle peppers which is you know a bit on the spicy side mixed with raisins and chocolate and it comes in all whole bunch of spices and things like that and when it comes out it's dark in color 
similar to chocolate and raisins. And so when you put it on top of something, it doesn't actually look appetizing. In my last What's For Dinner video, I told you guys to keep an open mind because I feel like people eat with their eyeballs before they actually decide if they're going to put that in their mouth. And for me, when I saw this thing go over the chicken, I was like, uh-uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to eat this. And when it cooked up, it was just a form of like a jerk flavor, but with this like chocolatey raisiny undertone i did not like it now i'm sure if i had a traditional mole cooked from somebody who knows what they're doing maybe i would love it but i didn't like this recipe and it was the first one out of all the recipes that we've shared that i didn't like and so i just couldn't share it with you guys i just wasn't i didn't really want to share that because it wasn't a recipe that i was interested in and so i'm just going to read you the excerpt so you know where we're caught up and then we're gonna get into the recipe and the excerpt that we're actually sharing today. So again, this is called Holy Moly Chicken. And then it says, he picks me up from the shelf and I notice for the first time an ingredients list posted on the door of the Sub-Zero. His list reads as bossy and kinky as he talks and it includes peanuts, chocolate, raisins, and me. What a perv. Are we making cookies? He glances at the list and narrows his eyes at me playfully. No, Miss Hen. I haven't figured out how to make you a dessert yet. He quirks his lips into a smile. I have something more elaborate planned for you today. Ah, well, what if I don't feel like elaborate today? You don't want to cook, he asks. Not just cook, I murmur. Am I really going to ask? I see, he frowns. Okay. Here goes nothing. I want you to make dinner with me. Simple, normal, unfinessed. His face clouds. Uh-oh, this isn't going well. He cocks his head from one side to the other and again, geez, he's really discombobulated. You want candles and linen, hearts and flowers? But I don't know how to do that, chicken. My tastes are very singular. I want you to taste only me. Taste me for what I am. Clean your plate, mop up my juices with your bread. He takes a dazed step back and for a moment the air grows tense. Please, I whisper. I don't know, he mutters, and he stalks off to find something. My subconscious is hopping mad. Now you've done it, you've made him chicken out. But he returns with that foxy look in his eyes. His apron hangs off his hips in that way that makes my whole body gobble with glee. He's holding something. It's a chunk of chocolate. Oh man, he really knows how to distract a girl. I still wish he'd make dinner with me, with me tasting like me, but maybe it's okay to let him cook me if there's chocolate involved. Just this once. So that was your little excerpt to this mole sauce. And again, it was called roasted chicken legs with mole. And then now we're gonna get into today's recipe, which is called hot rubbed head. You really can't keep buying me things. I'm looking furiously at yet another spice he's purchased. I like you in fine things, he replies. I have the means. Besides, there's a recipe. To hell with the recipes, I interrupt fuming. I can't keep up with him. Every night it's some hot new preparation, and this one looks downright fiery. But the harissa will be good on you. It will test your limits and mine. He smiles that searing smile and my bones loosen. Involuntary, I relent. He goes to the stereo to put on some loud pop music. He coats a brush with the hot paste. He lashes the harissa into my skin with the brush. Ow, it smarts. But quickly my skin is singing as it touches. He strokes my neck and shoulders, painting a trail of fire leading all the way down there. Hot damn. He slips two fingers inside of me, making me gasp. The touch of his spiced fingertips ignites hot sparks under my skin that fire into my bloodstream and pulse around my body, heating everything in their path. I groan. Oh my. It radiates through my cavity, everywhere. I'm building unstoppably. He continues to paint my skin with fire in slow, even strokes at first, but as his control unravels, the brush moves faster and faster. My back arches as I open myself to the consuming, punishing, 
heavenly sensation pushing me and pushing me, spiraling into a peppery hole. When I think I can take no more, he abruptly stills. His breathing ragged, he turns me gently over onto a soft bed of beans. You wear that well, he says. Keep it on for the rest of the day. I'll cook you tonight. And that, you guys, is it. So as you can see, it gets a little funny how they play with words. That is exactly what they wrote. But now I'm going to get into what I wrote that my husband and I will do together. So I hope you guys enjoy the next installment of Fifty Shades of Chicken. In today's episode, titled Hot Rubbed Hen, we are making roasted chicken with hot sauce, preserved lemons, chickpeas, and mint. One of the ingredients we need for today is two tablespoons of preserved lemon. That's a rare find and something of such refined taste should be made. So we are starting with four lemons, salt, sugar, water, and a resealable container. We are going to cut these round sour succulents in four quarters and place them into the container. Then to sweeten the deal, we are going to add two tablespoons of sugar three quarters of a tablespoon of salt and then fill the container with water. Give it a good shake and place in the fridge to ferment for three to four weeks. Once fermented, it is time to complete this recipe. Here are a list of the ingredients in today's recipe, in case you would like to follow along. We will need olive oil, some form of hot sauce, we couldn't find harissa, one can of chickpeas, three to four garlic cloves, mint for garnishing, red onion, black pepper, allspice, thyme, and salt. And of course, we can't forget Miss Hen. God, I've missed you. First, we need to drain and wash our chickpeas. We need them clean and ready. After they have drip dried, place them in a bowl. Now, it's time to peel back the layers of this onion to expose and remove its insides. Dice into chunks and as the fragrance fills the air, add those chunks to our wanting chickpeas. Now to really get the fragrance going, chop the garlic and add it to the bowl, along with three tablespoons of olive oil and one teaspoon of hot sauce to bring the heat. After a good stir, we are going to layer the bottom of a roasting pan with our mixture. Our lemons are ready for Miss Hen, so after dicing two tablespoons of the preserves, add it to a bowl with our salt, pepper, thyme, and allspice. Let's get ready to rub! This is my favorite part. Massage and caress Miss Hen as you work this delectable concoction into her skin. Don't forget the cavity. Now that she's panting and ready for more, Mix olive oil and hot sauce.
Place her on top of our mixture and apply a layer on top of her already glossy skin. Cover with a thin film and place in the fridge for at least 30 minutes, up to one day. The longer she sits, the hotter she gets. Then roast her at 375 for 30 minutes. Remove her from the hot box, thrust a wooden handle deep into her cavity, and flip her onto her back. Roast for another 30 minutes or until her juices run clear. Serve hot if you can handle her. Okay, you guys, so that is it for your somewhat double installment of 50 Shades of Chicken. I hope you guys enjoyed. It has been a super long time since we shared one of these, so I would love your guys' opinion and feedback down in the comments. Let us know if you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, we will continue to keep sharing them. These really are truly some of the best chicken recipes I have ever cooked, and I'm really looking forward to continuing to divulge into this cookbook, but I don't want to dive into it alone. I want to take you guys with me. So again, make sure to let us know if you liked it, and if you did, give it a big thumbs up so again, we know to keep sharing them. I love you guys all so much, and Daryl and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>